If there's one thing I get asked about more often than almost anything else, it's olive oil. After all, olive oil is at the core of the Mediterranean diet. It's pretty much used here every day from breakfast to dinner. And most of you already know it's a heart healthy monounsaturated fat that's good for you. And you probably also know you need a certain amount of healthy fat in your diet, along with protein and carbs, the other two essential macronutrients. But lots of you still have two questions. How do I decide what to buy? And how should I use it in the kitchen? By the end of this video, you're going to have answers to your questions. And hopefully by the end of next week or so, you'll have two bottles of olive oil in your kitchen and you'll know just what to do with them. So pull up a chair, grab a glass and join me in my Mediterranean kitchen while I help turn you into an olive oil expert. Let's start with how to decide what bottle to buy. You're going to want to think about three things. First, the differences between extra virgin olive oil, virgin olive oil, and olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is the first pressing of fresh olives, and it has to meet certain high quality standards, both chemical and sensory, about free fatty acids, peroxide levels, and purity. It can be a single varietal or a blend of different varieties, but if the brand is playing by the rules, it's made exclusively from olives. What's important to know is that extra virgin olive oil has the highest amount of heart healthy antioxidants, polyphenols, those things that make some olive oil taste a little bit bitter and peppery and burn a little at the back of your throat if you taste it straight up. Virgin olive oil normally comes from a second pressing where the olive oil pumice is put through the press a second time, but now they're using steam or heat to extract more oil. The bottom line is that this heat kills off some of the healthy nutrient qualities. It's not bad oil, it's just not as good for you. Whenever I talk about the difference between extra virgin olive oil and virgin olive oil, I always like to compare it to fresh orange juice because olives are a fruit just like oranges. What would you rather drink? The first juice squeezed out of an orange as soon as it's picked off the tree? Or juice made from oranges that have already gone through the press once and now what's left over is being used to extract another glass? When you get into the territory of oil that's labeled just plain olive oil or light olive oil, please don't bother. Number one, it will have been highly processed and most of its healthy qualities simply won't be there. And number two, light olive oil just means flavorless and colorless, but the amount of calories will be exactly the same as all other fats. In other words, about 120 calories per tablespoon. And you can see it on the nutritional label. And speaking of the label, it's time to answer the second question. How can I avoid buying oil that really isn't olive oil? Back in the 1990s, George and I grew olives and made olive oil in California. We were part of that early group of Americans that wanted to make the very best oil we could. And as a group, we fought against rampant fraud of imported oil and fought for better consumer controls so that you'd know what was in that expensive bottle on the grocery store shelf. And a few things changed. Labeling got better. But after all the years I've been in the olive oil business, one way or another, unfortunately, some things never changed. It's still a challenge not to be tricked into buying fake stuff. And it's still hard to know what's worth the money and what isn't. But at this point, the label is what will give you the best chance at a smart buy. It can tell you a few really important things. So it's a good idea to know how to read it because there are things that matter and there are things that don't. So let's talk about four things that really matter. Number one, olive oil grade. Extra virgin olive oil, virgin olive oil, or olive oil. Number two, product origin. This is where the olives were grown. Three, harvest date. This will tell you when the olives were harvested, and ideally you want to buy an oil that's made from the most recent harvest year. Fall of the year in the U.S. and Europe, spring of the year in the southern hemisphere, countries like Chile and Australia. For example, U.S. domestic olive oil that would be considered fresh on the shelves right now would be dated 2023-2024. And number four, olive oil varietal or blend, because this is what determines the flavor profile. And I'll talk more about this when we get into the second big question, how to use it in the kitchen. But now let's talk about four things that are pretty much meaningless at best and misleading at worst. Best buy date. This would be helpful if it were based on the harvest date, but it isn't. It's most often refers to two years after the oil was packaged or bottled, not harvested. Number two, bottled date. 
this is pretty much the same thing. It too tells you nothing important because bottling could happen at any time, regardless of how old the oil is. And in worst cases, it could be stockpiled stuff that's already a year or two old. Number three, bottled in country. This tells you nothing important because where the oil was bottled is not necessarily where it was grown and processed. And it pretty much assures you that the olives were not harvested there. And here's a funny fact. More olive oil is marketed in the U.S. by Italian brands than is actually produced in Italy. Italy imports more than half of its oil from Spain, the leading country of olive oil production in the world, and then bottles it for export because, <laughs> frankly, they are really good at marketing the romance out of olive oil. And finally, packaged by or distributed by? This is just the middleman company that manages the oil between the producer and the retailer, so that's not important at all. Aside from those things, there's a few reliable industry sources around the world, like Floss Olay and the New York World Olive Oil Competition and the California Olive Oil Council in the U.S. that certify quality and judge olive oil based on important characteristics like appearance, smell, taste, and viscosity. And if you see their certification symbols on the labels, it helps to validate the quality and authenticity of the oil. It means you can trust what they say is in the bottle is really in the bottle. And in fact, 20 years ago, George and I won a gold medal at the most prestigious awards in the world for the very first olive oil we ever produced. So we know it's a good thing. Now, third, how do I know if it's worth the price? Let's start in the store, especially since olive oil prices have soared in recent years because of the back-to-back -back poor harvest seasons and increasing demand for decreasing supply. It's more important now than ever to make sure your money is well spent. Before you even pick up a bottle, is it in a container that protects it from light? Like a dark glass bottle instead of a clear plastic one. That's a good indication the bottler cares about shelf life. If you can find it in a bag and box container like some wines are sold in, even better. That brand is spending extra money to make sure it stays free of oxygen too as you use it, which is another quality killer of olive oil shelf life. Now, pick it up and see if it passes the label test. You know what to look for now, so see what you can learn from what's on that bottle label before you bother to buy it. And despite the price of these oils, don't forget when you're investing in a bottle of oil, it'll be a lot less expensive than a single bottle of wine, last a lot longer, and influence many more meals than one glass of red or white. What's most important will be your point of view about how it tastes to you, how you like to cook with it, and those two things should be your guide. Okay, now that you know what to look for in the store, let's move on to the second biggest question. How should I use it in the kitchen? I'm gonna propose that you plan on having two different bottles, one for cooking and one for finishing. Not because extra virgin olive oil can't be used for both, I do it all the time, but because prices being what they are, you don't need to spend top dollar for the highest quality oils on everything. Just the recipes where the oil is a part of the flavor profile like dressings and ones where the finishing drizzle seasons the final dish to perfection. And even though I'm gonna suggest virgin olive oil, not extra virgin olive oil for cooking, I still wanna tackle the single biggest misconception about cooking with olive oil. And that is that you shouldn't cook with it because of something called smoke point. Here's the thing, extra virgin olive oil starts smoking between 350 and 465 degrees. And the best temperature to fry or saute anything is not above 375. So it should never be above smoke point anyway. And this is a media story, in my opinion, that's been blown way out of proportion. Even though research proves that heat reduces the healthiest qualities, the more the good stuff the oil starts with, the more it retains. So yes, you can absolutely cook with extra virgin olive oil. But should you? Here are my thoughts. If you're using it as a cooking element, like any other fat, as in a stew or a soup, a braise, saute, or grill, then the more cost-effective virgin olive oil is better. You're not using it to flavor the dish, you're using it to cook the dish, and it's healthier than saturated fats. And the smoke point is even a little bit higher, although, as I mentioned, it really doesn't have to factor into things. When you're finishing a dish, or when olive oil is a core flavor ingredient, like a salad dressing, a pesto, a hummus, or a saucy type dish, then if you can, use extra virgin olive oil for the flavor it adds. Just think of it like any other spice. So what about that flavor? First, this is fruit juice, so no matter what flavor it is, it should smell and taste fresh. 
And while there are over 300 different olive varieties to make oil with, most producers only grow a handful of the most popular ones like mild arbequina, rich oji blanca, or spicy piquao. And to make it easier for you, they create blends that match the three basic flavor or taste profiles to think about. First, delicate or mild, which means it's going to be pretty nutty and buttery, floral and fruity. The aroma might even remind you of tropical fruits like bananas. Second, medium will be fruity but much more vegetal, smelling like herbs or fresh cut grass or the olives it was made with. And third, robust is marked by being fairly bitter and peppery. These oils, my favorite single varietal piqual, are dense with those healthy polyphenols, the element that makes it burn a little at the back of your throat. But it works like magic in some dressings and dips to add a spicy flavor to a finished dish. But all that really matters is what tastes delicious to you. So you're gonna to have to start experimenting. I'd suggest starting with blends or mild oils and work your way up to stronger options. Another good place to start is to trust the best and most widely available producers like California Olive Company or Cobra Olive and try a few of their affordable curated blends. And another trick to make sure the quality of the oil you spend good money on stays that way is the phrase I start every video with. Hola! Because when it comes to olive oil, Ola isn't just a friendly way to greet the day in Spain. It's a reminder of all those things that make olive oil quality go downhill fast. Heat, oxygen, light, and age. So just remember to keep it sealed up tight, store it away from sunny windows and hot stove tops, and use it up. Don't save it for special occasions. What's most important is that if you want to follow the Mediterranean diet, extra virgin olive oil should become your new best friend. Just like I do here in Spain, you can use it all day long to get the healthy benefits from this amazing ingredient. You can cook with it, you can finish dishes with it, you can make it the heart of sauces, dresses, or marinades, or use it to infuse flavor in all kinds of ways. And if you want to learn even more about it, you should watch this masterclass I created all about olive oil.